<laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> it's like riding, riding in cars with comedians. You know, you know, but I'm not like freaking, you know, Jerry Seinfeld. I don't have a budget, so we got some fire here and some fires. I'm like, I said, Whole Foods. And, and cool people, bro. It's I mean, it's and it's quality. also COVID, so I just think it's pretty cool. Are we going? Are we rolling? Welcome to The Encounter. I'm Terrace King II, and our first encounter will be with diplomat, explorer, and entrepreneur, Andrew Adams. Please follow him at Jet Set Drew or at Urban Travel. If you like this film, please like and subscribe. Welcome to the first episode, and many more to come, of The Encounter. And uh, this whole series is all about having really interesting conversations with interesting people, um, but mainly to connect to something I'm passionate about, which is early childhood education during these crazy times, um, and really the connection between nature and technology, which is something I'm really excited about. I thought on this first episode, we would start with my like first friend. You know, um, This is Andrew Adams. Um, I think a lot of the ladies out there call you Jet Set Drew. Is that true? Is it Jet, that Jet? is what my that Instagram is. handle is. That is. There's how... a lot of pictures there of, of him with his shirt off. I don't take my shirt off in public anymore, <laughs> but he still does, which I think is cool. And um, I think the main thing is, um, you, he's this guy's just been such an inspiration to me. And, and, and not often do I have people in my life where every time I see you, it's like I saw you the day before. And it might be years in between, and then I'll see you and it's the same energy and anyone who knows Drew, his energy is out of this world. Like, and the things that he does for our culture and really for me as a father and as somebody who has followed his lead in living abroad and traveling as many places as possible, you're just a part of a movement of our people um, traveling and seeing the world. And that is something to um, just really, I'm just so proud of you. So this is the way I wanted to start this whole thing because it's not often we're in the same place at the same time for this much yeah. time, bro. This very, is not, very rare. This is very rare. Um, and where I want to start, I mean, we have a lot of stories. Um, a lot of stories. Stuff that I don't really want my mother to hear or to see right now. But one we'll story specifically, we'll hold off on those. Um, one story specifically took place in these woods, you know, here at my home. And... We're going to tell this story together because I've, I often tell the story, but having your perspective on it, I remember my perspective. Um, I remember like yesterday. I remember like it was yesterday, right? Like, uh, so, so Drew, you were living in the Philippines or at that point in time, I think I was living in Sweden. You were coming back from Sweden. Yeah, probably coming back from Sweden. And it was the summer before moving to Iraq. Iraq. Yeah, that's yes. where I was going. And I remember it, you hit me up like you always do. You do a good job of this. I usually just like go into a cocoon <laughs> when I come home to get back abroad. When you come home, you're like, yo, I'm home. Let's get home. up. Drink. Like, let's get up. Um, I never do that. And when you hit me up, I was like, what's good? You're like, I'm going to Iraq, bro. I'm trying to shoot some guns. And you know me, I'm like, bet, bro. Let's go down in the woods and shoot some guns, right? So we organized it. Yeah. We were with my man Chase Cord. I had, you know, Bob's had some guns. We brought them down here. My man brought some big boys down this joint. Um, okay, so then I'll let you take over the story now. So we come down here to the woods. So there we were. So, hold on. And, and then also, Drew, let me add this in. Let me add this in. Let me add this in. I had also came back. That was my first year living abroad. So oh, both of our so perspectives are on were on abroad. Like, abroad. like we were abroad. We were yeah. not here. That was after Freddie Gray. And I was coming, I was free, bro. Like, yeah, back home, bro, from Shanghai. Let me tell you some stories. All right, mm -hmm. so now we get down here to the woods. So we got down here to the woods and everything was great. You everything know, was we great. just a couple of bros hanging out, shooting some shooting guns. Shooting some guns. Good old American way. On private property. Private Good American property, way, I think. On private property, shooting some guns. <laughs> You know, not not bothering anybody, or so we thought. We I didn't think we were bothering. Didn't anyone. think we were bothering anybody. We weren't hurting anybody. There was nobody in danger or anything like that. So just as we were we were wrapping up, right? We had just fired a few more rounds. We we're wrapping up, and I'm, I think it was my turn to shoot. So it was. I had the gun, and I was just letting off. And I remember hearing. I think it was Chase that was like, "Hey, did you hear something?" <laughs> and I'm like, 
nah, I didn't hear anything except this gun. Like, bah, bah, bah. And he's like, wait. And then I, I, I think I stopped shooting and then I heard police. Bro, how and many of them were there? It was at least, there was three. It, it was at least three. To me, it felt like there was more. It, it, the way that they were coming in like a formation almost. But before they got to the, before we saw the formation, this is how we, this is how we realized the formation. I had the gun, I turned around, and out of the trees, you just see like, they just popped out of the trees. Like they, like I they didn't know they were there, they popped no out of idea. nowhere. My full fact, I think this detail is important, like the guns were thumping. Yeah. Like they were big boys, <laughs> like they weren't like, cat, cat, cat. It was thump back here. We like, yeah. kick, 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 kick. It was like an extra sound that was ricocheting off of the Yeah, the it, was re it was reverberating around, <laughs> yeah, around sure. the trees. For sure. Right. And luckily, luckily we were shooting this way. We were. It, it was the, responsible. But remember, the cops came from behind us. Bruh. And I'm just so thankful Bruh. that we weren't shooting at them. I mean, we weren't shooting at them because we didn't know they were there. I mean, but we weren't shooting in their direction, and that's so lucky for us. So they pop out of the out of the trees. What is your first initial gut response? I I just heard police, and I saw I saw them pointing guns at me. Because they were drawn. Yeah, they, yeah, guns were drawn on us. And I just thought, oh, I'm gonna die. Like this is it. Can, can we talk about the fact that that emotion in that moment was not far off of what we've seen consistently? Oh yeah, for sure. Not the fact that like, you know, usually there's a script around like the fear that police have, which is why they kill unarmed black men. We were armed and our guns were bigger than theirs. Yeah. For sure. We were armed and shooting. And we were shooting and our guns and our were guns way were bigger than theirs. <laughs> like I feel like, you so, know, a yeah, man might have like, had a bazooka down here. Like in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is a cop's dream. like. You, you have absolutely every, uh, you know, what you're warranted to, to do, you know, like, probable cause to, let's shoot some black people in the woods who have guns on them. Who are by themselves, by themselves. in the middle of the woods. No one would ever know the story. Yeah. Now, interesting enough, man, you got three intelligent you know you're college educated you know you're a diplomat i'm a kid, international kindergarten teacher chase at the time i think he had started his company in dc like you know more i was grads like we're all just like buddies like my instinct in the moment let me tell you how much culture shock that has happened over the last five years was like yo this is private property <laughs> like that's how far <laughs> removed i was from american culture <laughs> get off my property <laughs> which which for me bro like that's one of my first questions like I want to unpack like the freedom, like I, I was a free black man for a second, like where I didn't even think about all the layers of things in that moment because I had just spent a year in China not thinking about it, intentionally, not on the news, not on social just media, living. stress that comes like, could you speak to like what it feels like to live? This is, you're, you're moving soon to your fifth or sixth country you've lived in, like you're losing count. I know I've, I am too. I've lived a few places. You've lived a few places. And, and I, if you could just speak to like what that feels like for the brothers who would just like to take a journey in your shoes, bro. Like I, I mean, it's remarkable is a word that comes to mind. Yeah. I would just say that uh, we should all travel more. Now, I understand that not everybody has the ability to travel, but... And I hate to pick on, I hate to pick on um, our culture and say like, but if you can buy a Gucci belt, right, 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 you right. can That's buy George, dude. you can buy hair and makeup. I hate That's to no pick fun. on that. Yeah. You know, I hate to pick on it's, that. But people like Gucci belts. People like Gucci belts. The point cool. is, if you prioritize something, yeah. then you'll make it happen. And the problem that I think a lot of us have is that we don't know that there's something else out there. So. You're, you're probably not gonna prioritize traveling to some foreign country where you don't speak the language, where you don't know what the food is like, where you don't know what the security is like. You might not prioritize that in your life. And what, you know, my goal is to get people to prioritize that and see the, um, the possibilities of what their future holds. Now, traveling around the world, I would say for me as a black man, has been nothing short of amazing. Now, I've had plenty of scenarios that I've gotten myself into uh, or that 
found me for you know one way or another right. that are not are less than favorable right? right they're less than favorable but I've never felt like I was targeted because I was black right in fact it's quite the opposite it's more that people are praising me because I'm black people give me respect because I'm black people want to be like me because I'm black right. and the irony of it is that if you peel back the layers, it's the same thing in the States, but they know it and they refuse to acknowledge it. It's very true. So they I, still I want yeah, they, they still want all the things. They still sure. want to have to experience the culture. Yeah. They still want to wear their hair the same way. They still want to listen to the music. All the best athletes are black. All the, the slang, all the way that we talk, everything that is cool or interesting about America is because of black people or other people of culture. So well, you know the, the you know I always go back whenever people mention like the word cool, like the birth of cool. You know like Miles Davis like a time period where like the term period was connected to our culture. And um there we go. I would agree with you. Like some people have stories of living in China or living in Asia or, and have negative stories, but I don't have a negative thing to say about living abroad and my intention was to actually immerse myself and to connect to and embrace the culture i was living in mm -hmm. um as you should as you should when you travel uh, and, and for me right now like to 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 now like go in the direction of just like our encounter here um some of my some of my first memories were like playing lacrosse with you in like a parking lot with like I think like our dads like on a weekend and some of my later memories of us like getting on an M8 bus like I'm going to give and yep. going to Polly you know what I'm saying like <laughs> <laughs> um or like you know us in you know at parties at Morehouse like literally like like yeah. having a ball um and you know those different moments for me per personally were like these encounters that happened of while we were like exploring you know the world that we live in from like learning a new sport to like you know like little stuff like catching a bus for the first time in baltimore city was like for me being from ramstown like was a thing going to south baltimore you know it was like yeah. a whole journey of like seeing the world and like even though it was like in the same city, train. yeah, like I, I did the same. The M8, the 33, there we go, and the train. And you would get to your destination. Could you talk a little bit about the difference between travel and exploration? Because you you mentioned like you really wanting people to travel. Yeah, but like I, to I will to to like really because I I see you as like a modern day Matthew Henson, right? Like. I see you as a person who is exploring the world because what I when I look at your photos and when I look at what you're doing, I never see you like in luxury doing like something cheesy you could do at like the Ritz here in the States. Like you're in the culture and you're engaging with the people and you're making connections within your exploring. Could you speak to the difference between the two? I think you actually summed that up already. I didn't want to. But I will expound on that. Please I will expound do. on that. That was good. But um, I think you hit the nail on the head with, you know, traveling versus exploring. These are two different things, right? So a lot of people now the wave is to to travel and take pictures at the place where they saw somebody else take a picture. And I mean I get it, like everybody everybody does that to some degree. I've been to Paris, I've taken a picture in front of the Eiffel Tower, I've been to Italy, I've taken a picture in front of the Parthenon, I think it's Parthenon, is it Pantheon or Parthenon? Yeah. One of those. One of those. One of those old buildings <laughs> that means nothing to me, but I took a picture because I was like, oh, there's a thing. There's a thing that people take pictures, pictures, pictures in front of. of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done that, you know, but I think that's part of what you do when you're traveling. But in addition to traveling, exploration is like a branch of traveling like traveling I feel like gets you to this point and anybody can do that but exploring is when you take you know another turn and you go beyond what you know the picture that everybody took 
So when you're exploring, as you said, you're you're trying out all the new food, you're trying out the culture. Like in, in, in my my way to learn a culture is is uh, to eat the food, to listen to the music, drink the local alcohol, and and dance. There we go. You know, like those are very simple things to do. Yeah, but you can dance. Uh, you know, it was the SpongeBob. I, I, I remember like not knowing. I'm, I'm the big, I'm the big brother. So like I couldn't do it because I just wasn't light on my feet, and I just recall it being very simple that, to you. That was very simple back in the you day, know, like Western parties. We, but you know, like that. The irony of it is that the SpongeBob dance from back in the day. Anybody who's actually from Baltimore knows anything about Baltimore. <laughs> knows that, the SpongeBob that was dance. born in what the '80s. Yo, knows the SpongeBob, and I could never do it. But that dance is strikingly similar to dances that they do in Africa. There we go. And I didn't know that, obviously, years ago until I went to Africa. And I was like, they got this fun vibe out here. Like, they doing, they doing the crazy legs. I was like, wow. <coughs> so, like, they've been doing this for probably forever. Forever. And we're in Baltimore. Like, oh, yeah, we got this new crazy leg dance, whatever. But I thought I could dance until I went to South Africa. And I went to, like, I was partying with the Zulus. Like, that was one of the, that was a cool cultural experience for me because, you know, when we were growing up, like, you read about in history, like, oh, Shaka Zulu and the Zulu tribe, and they were fierce, and they were da 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 Like, I guess in my head, I felt like, oh, those people are gone. Like, I never, like, it was like Shaka Zulu, and then, like, his tribe is gone. Like, whatever, that's my ignorance. But when I got out there, and I met some people, and they were like, yeah, we're Zulu. And I was like, wow, like, you're actually the people that I read about. And they, I mean, they dressed like us. It wasn't like they had on like a little loincloth and a spear. I mean, they were dressed just like me. They were wearing regular clothes and they were cool. They had this cool accent. They spoke in their language. And I, it was like the one with like, some of it had like the clicks in it. It's called, like, I forgot what it's called. I'm, and I'm not gonna attempt to do it. Uh, but it was super cool to like see them. And then once they started dancing, I didn't even want to dance anymore. I was just like, let me just watch them because I felt like I couldn't even bring anything to the table. I had my little two-step. I was over here like this, and they were just like moving their bodies in like weird ways. I was like, man, they they really yeah. got it going on. So that was, I don't even know what the what the first question was, but that was. No, well, uh, I, I know, wanted uh, to hear more stories like that. I think interesting experience. You, you know, like there are kids in our city, people in our city who don't go to the other side of the city. Not to mention not going outside of the state, if not outside of the country possibly by choice, but I think a lot of times it's because of the lack of access to those types of opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I want to bring to the table, again, uh, thinking about children, specifically young children, thinking about the progression of humanity. Could you speak to, again, you talked about exploration and travel, but like, what has happened to your mind, your body, your spirit, your perspective? In, the expansion i think we've had like very fascinating conversations since we i've started living abroad usually it was just me listening to you like tell me more drew you know <laughs> but then it was like once i was abroad i was like okay now what happened to you what happened and, and once and what could happen to our children i think what happened to me was just a more of a there's a few things so I realized how small I was in the world. Like no matter how big my problems are here, in the grand scheme of things, it's minute. Like it really doesn't matter. Like we put a lot of emphasis on our own problems and don't even realize the types of things that other people are dealing with in other parts of the world. So that was number one. It kind of like puts you in, you know, gives it a good perspective of like where you stand and how you handle your reactions to the, the circumstances that you're dealing with. Number two, I would say, it gave me a sense of self-worth, again, like mm -hmm. referencing back to being black, traveling around the world. I felt very appreciated in a way that I never felt in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I always felt like I was cool, you know, but once I traveled to abroad, I was like, oh no, I'm a rock star. Like, I'm actually a rock star, you know? So, just self Realizing yourself, your self-worth, your value. Realizing, you know, that your problems are not the end of the world and life will go on and people are handling things with grace or perhaps not with grace, but they're still handling it, right? Another thing that I, that I realized 
or my eyes were opened up to while traveling was just <clears throat> that you can take somebody else's situation, like their perspective on life, and bring that with you in your life. So just how like certain customs that people have in different places, such as like Japan, like with the whole bowing thing, mm -hmm. they're very respectful, they're very um, deliberate in what they do, and they take a lot of pride in what they do. So something like a job as a janitor in the States, that's, you know, in, in our status, in our, you know, our system, being a janitor is very low on the, you know, the, the realm of like success, right? But a janitor in Japan, he still is going to mop the floors to the best of his ability and nobody's gonna look down on him because he's a janitor. So seeing something like that, you know, I mean, we when I was a kid, you know, we used to tease, you know, we used to tease like handicapped people, we used to tease a janitor or, or whomever, a bus driver or whatever. And that's, I mean, that's my ignorance or was my ignorance as a child, but that's what kids do. But I think that if a child from here went to another culture and saw how people were treated in certain other places, they might learn that, you know what, actually, it's not right to belittle somebody for this and that reason. So I learned these things as an adult traveling. So I can only imagine the impact on a person's life that, that, that it would have if you learn this as a child. So where I want to go now is like, one, to, again, dig more into like how you are utilizing. I mean, you're, you've had all these amazing experiences, whatever it might be, but for somebody who's had these experiences and travels anyway, you could just post it and become like a, you know, a figure on, you know, online and people could be like, oh, he's really cool, he travels. But you created a complete business while working, you know, while working a job, like, a complete very successful business helping other people and encouraging other people to go i think a lot of times you know for me traveling by i love being alone but some people like to go and travel in groups and you created this business and i won't want you to talk about you know urban travel mm -hmm. with no vowels other than the other than the U. yes something to know if you're looking it up online U-R-B-N-T-R-V-L. <laughs> there you go. It took me a while. I was like, urban travel. I was like, third page on Google. Like, where is it at? And I was like, so no vowels other than the U. But then also, uh, if you could talk about how you've utilized technology to help your business to thrive. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would love to. So should I start with like how or why it started? Or I think you should say it how, however you want to dive into it. One, I, I want to learn more about that. You know, um, but I think for, for people watching, knowing your journey, but for, you know, my son one day when he's starting his own company, I would love to hear how um, you've utilized tech specifically okay. to make that happen. Yeah. So um, gonna, I'm not going to get into like, I'm not going to tell a long story. I'm going to tell it as short and sweet, as short and concise as possible. But basically I was traveling somewhere. I was in the Philippines actually. I rented an island with a couple friends and I remember thinking, and it was a deserted island, there's nothing there, just the island and the water and the mountain. So we rented an island, cooked on the beach, you know, slept in tents and yada, yada, yada. But I remember thinking like, this experience was so amazing that I would pay my own money to have somebody from my city see this. Mm. So that was the catalyst, right? Mm. And then, you know, I started traveling with a group of guys and people saw us traveling and they wanted to come. And then we said, oh, you know, maybe we should just like, make it a company and just like plan our regular trips and then charge a little bit extra if anybody else wants to join and that's essentially how it started like there's, there's not much more than that but uh, you know using the technology is what made it all feasible because again, like I said people saw us and had they not seen us on Facebook and Instagram or Twitter or whatever platform it was then we wouldn't be where we are so our business is I mean other than word of mouth, which is great, word of nothing better than word of mouth, but other than word of mouth, it's been, you know, Facebook and Instagram ads. And I'm still trying to get the hang of it because they are constantly changing the algorithms. And, you know, I'm, right now, currently less people are seeing my page. So I'm still trying to navigate how to, how to capitalize on that. Some people have figured it out and mastered it, but I have not mastered it yet. But even, even so, 
um, we've you know grown this page and people basically will see our pictures that we post they'll see you know stories that we post they'll see the advertisements for trips they heard about it they want to check it out and then they come so it's pretty much technology driven there we go. Um, so technology is obviously a very crucial part of it and then as you were mentioning something about the group trips we welcome people we do do group trips but we welcome people whether they're singles whether they're couples whether they're women or men blah 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 bring one bring all so that provides a space for people to network uh, a lot of times you know like you'll have a person that wants to travel but their friends can't go right. that's very common so we provide a space where you can travel somewhere without your friends and you're in a safe space and you're amongst people that are you know like-minded everybody's professionals from whatever industry you know we have you know people that are chefs we have teachers we have doctors lawyers nurses we have engineers and pretty much anything that you can name and all of these people come together we, we fellowship together we eat we drink we party we explore the culture and all these things we do as a group and from this a lot of people have made like lasting friendships people yeah. that never knew each other before met on one of our trips and now they're taking side trips to wherever so all in all i mean that that's the mission of that's the mission of my company and i do seek to inspire more people to explore mm -hmm. as opposed to just traveling mm -hmm. so that's we try to incorporate some sort of cultural exploration Thanks. in all of our trips one way or the other wherever we are we are going to figure out what is very cultural for example in Morocco we did hammam spas which is a, a very specific thing to being in Morocco and it's very intrusive have you, you ever heard of that I haven't I've, I've heard of it but I've never done it before I've never been to Morocco okay picture yourself if you will uh, let's say you and I you know a couple other guys whatever we're, we're all in a room and then a woman comes in and it's like this like the whole room is like stone okay and then like a woman comes in and we each take our turns laying down on this flat part of the stone and she is scrubbing us vigorously and exfoliating our skin like the dead skin that just I all think. the dead skin and she's like taking a hot bucket of water pouring it on you with soap <laughs> scrubbing you my so my point is what is the point of having everyone in there at the same time today? because it's just it's the community it's aspect the community of, aspect of, of it it's, 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 i don't even know if you're like you don't have to necessarily have everybody in there but it's a, a situation where if there's other people in the room it makes it then better. you just you'll get your turn when is your turn yeah, or you yeah, yeah, yeah. or you could have it privately but that's just not how we did it we were it was I, like I love it. I love a it. bunch of us and yeah, i just yeah. remember thinking like this is very intimate and this is that like, is extremely intimate this is yeah and, and in the women they were the women were in a different room with mostly mostly all women and they're like in their bras and panties or whatever and they don't know each other like that so just to force each other to be in a otherwise uncomfortable situation now oh there's, there's more oh, no okay. no right. no no <laughs> what you just said okay and I want to create this parallel here and then I want to kind of wrap this first episode right and what you just described to me is literally what I do as a kindergarten teacher every single year I take people from kids from different families put them in a room and have them go through experiences together and in a lot of ways as an adult you're playing the role of an early childhood professional because you create and facilitate these learning journeys these learning excursions uh, for adults and you curate their experience and that is one of the reasons why I wanted you to come on and be my first guest because when I watch you um, in a lot of ways some of the things you know I'm about to do next and some of the think ways that we're gonna work together next I'm looking forward to taking that passion you have and and applying it to younger children who are sometimes yes in classrooms but giving them opportunities to explore outside of those classrooms bringing them together curating experience being like mr. fun just said drew by the way look him up wherever you follow things he's he is the <laughs> guy but more so than that drew like i appreciate you coming man and for us to have this encounter during these times when we're so separated from friends and family um 
you know, God, I love you, man. So I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, Likewise. for watching uh, the first episode of The Encounter. And uh, we'll first be back. First of many. First of many, yeah. We'll be back with more. You'll probably see Drew in there again. You I, would, I would love to come, come back. Talk about life experience. There we go. Anytime. And that's what it's all about. Because, you know, hey, someone's going to someone's gonna listen to this whole thing. Probably just our moms. Yeah. Probably just our so, moms. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> Get on that camera and then talk together. <laughs> that's what my mom's going to do. And then that's all it's really about, man. It's, you know, we got the videography. It's really just for our moms to watch. And our dad's going to hate on us. Like, man, why you wear the boots, man? You, you know, your jeans too tight, man. You know, that's my dad's going to say. So I think, um, yeah, man, thank you. And uh, we're out. Peace. Thanks, Drew. Yeah, I'm play a little, little random game called Pick a Country, and I'll tell you a story about it. Thank you.